This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Smith versus Williams. It's my understanding, Ms. Smith, that you are suing Mr. Williams and his neighborhood Mart grocery store for injuries you sustained when you slipped and fell in his store. You're asking this court to award you $110,000 for past medicals, $50,000 for future medicals, $500,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $660,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Williams, you believe that this is not your fault. If Ms. Smith had been paying attention, she would not have been injured in your store. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, how did you come to this store that day? Well, Your Honor, I went to the neighborhood, Mart, and I have to tell you, the store is not what it used to be, but saving money is just so important to me that even though the quality's gone downhill, I was willing to continue to shop there. Tell me about the neighborhood, Mart. How long have you owned this store? Yes, Your Honor, I've owned this particular store for just a little bit. I just purchased it from the uh, previous owner. Okay. Uh, I bought the, uh, I own the neighborhood mod in three other stores. Uh, I believe in, in community. I believe in hard work. This is my meat and potatoes. I love this. I, I was a kid. I used to run up the grocery store aisles back and forth like a kid in a candy store. It's just what I do. Well, when uh, I was growing up, the Neighborhood Mart was the anchor of the community. Is that how your story is? That's what I like to think it is. That's what the community, th uh, that's how the community looks at us. So, Ms. Smith, how did this happen? Well, Your Honor, I was going up and down the aisles with my cart, and I went to the dairy aisle, and I grabbed a tub of sour cream, and it slipped out of my hands and spilled on the floor. And so uh, the whole time I was texting with my husband, he was letting me know things that we needed. And so I, I took a picture and sent it to him because I was frustrated and said, look what you made me do. You're distracting me. Let me finish and I'll be home as soon as I can. And I was waiting on the checkout line when he texted me one more time and he said, could I please bring home some coffee creamer? What did you do then? So I went back to the dairy aisle to get the creamer and then I, I slipped in the sour cream that I had spilled earlier, and I, I fell, and I, I, as I was falling, I, I honestly couldn't believe it was still there. It had been so long since I'd been there. So you it slipped was, in the sour cream that you had spilled earlier? Yes, and I, I was embarrassed then, and I'm embarrassed now, but as a result of this injury, I have this severe cervical fracture that I had to have a fusion on my neck for. And as a result, I can barely move my head from left to right. I, I cannot even do my daily routine. I can barely take care of my twins. I have to have help at all times. It is physically and emotionally and in every way just painful and unbearable. So, Mr. Williams, Ms. Smith falls on one of your products on your floor. Yes, sir. Um, why isn't this your fault? She never reported the spill. We didn't know, know about this until after the plaintiff had fallen. We, I, I remember this day. It, it was a busy day. I got a, a note over the PA that said that someone needed assistance. So I rushed down to the dairy aisle, and there was Miss Smith on the, on the ground, being attended to by one of my employees. I rushed over there. I heard her insisting that she was fine. She says, I'm fine. She stands up. She goes to leave. I said, wait, 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 wait. We got to fill out an incident report. And I'm terribly sorry that this happened, but this is not our fault. So if she was going to handle this properly, what was she supposed to do after she f spilled the sour cream? Well, she, she would have let us know first that there was a, there was a spill. Well, how did well, she do that? Your Honor, I have to tell you, he should have cleaned that up oh. for 20 minutes to go by, maybe even more. And for that store not to be watching the floor Honor, and have th their employees this, this, cleaning this, and uh, checking Honor, on a regular basis is so outrageous. You it is should so have reported the spill, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, take a, a deep breath. <sighs> your Honor, she never reported the spill. Well, what would have happened had she reported it? If she would have... <laughs> Your Honor, Honor. We, we have systems and protocols in place for this. You submitted yeah. your protocol to yes, this sir. court. Yeah, absolutely. Display signs to inform the customer spill has occurred. That would be the, our yellow hazard cone. Okay. Have someone block off to alert customer and block off the entire area. That way nobody goes near the, the spill. Okay. So we can't have these slip and falls. Sweep up any broken glass or, or mop immediately anything that would have caused any kind of hazard, any kind of slip and fall. Okay. Keep the wet floor signs up until, the, until it's completely dry. So had you known this is what your employees me, would have done? Me, I would well, have done it myself as your, a store owner. That's your Honor. responsibility. No one's, no one's too big to, to sweep up the floor and mop the floor. That your is Honor. the responsible way Absolutely. to do it. Absolutely, yes, Your Honor. Yes. Your Honor, I, yes, I hear... I, 
I hear what Mr. Williams is saying, but there really should be a step ahead of those one, two, three, four, and that should be that you pay enough attention to the floor of your store while people, especially at the busiest time, that you're paying attention. Somebody else could have spilled well, well, how, Wait, wait it's a minute. How are you saying he ought to pay attention when you spilled it? You're looking at it. I don't work for the store, Your Honor. He has a duty. In a general sense, that is true. But it's also true in a general sense that each and every one of us, every customer in a store, you've got to look out for your own safety, especially if you did the spill. Your Honor, why didn't somebody else who, somebody else went down the dairy aisle and didn't see that that happened? There wasn't anyone else who could report it? And there's an employee why there to help me off the floor and he didn't spill. see the sour cream? No one's going to walk behind That's you and report ridiculous. your spill. We're going to have order in this courtroom. Yes, Your Honor. That's not what I'm saying. And, and I don't mean to beat up on you. I'm trying to make this make common sense yes. for me. And, and I hear what you're saying. And you know what? If I if I didn't have a sick child at home and so much else going on in my life, to tell you the truth, if somebody else had spilled that and I saw it, I might do that myself. But when you own a store, you have a duty to care for your patrons. I have never had an incident And this before. never happened before when the mart was owned by someone else. I have never, never had ever saw a like spill. This in my store, in, in my life. I have four stores. This is my third store. Well, you've had spills before. But never had anybody slip and fall on it, ever. But I've never had anybody walk into my store before, hit sour cream, walk around my store, then slip and fall on the sour cream, then leave, go to their car, and then want $660,000 from me. Your I've Honor, never had that either, Your Honor. Your Honor, I don't think it's unreasonable. When, when I got picked up off the floor, I was shocked, I was embarrassed, and the- You were also the, fine. Excuse me, but I'm not done. The car is not that far from the front door, and it, so it took me a few extra minutes to realize what happened to me because I didn't respond to him in that very moment. That's yes, completely unreasonable, how dare you? What's unreasonable? Well, well that's not that uncommon, y'all, really. In these personal injury cases, sometimes people are badly injured, but yes. the shock of the circumstance they get up and get in their car and go home and die. Oh. So it's the adrenaline that gets them past the initial impact of an injury. Now here, we'll figure this out, but just because someone says, hey, I'm okay, and they get up, get their groceries, and go home, doesn't mean they're not badly hurt, and we see this. Your Honor, my carts are the open mesh wire, wire type, the yes, type sir. you can see right through, through the bottom, through the sides, through the top. Right. There's no way she missed that spill if she was walking where she was going. That she was, spilled it and then walked around the store after she took a picture of it. That was 20 minutes earlier. It wasn't 20 and not minutes. to mention, the picture we're seeing there is an empty grocery cart. And by the time this happened, I had a full grocery cart. I couldn't see the bottom. I was looking took at the coffee back, creamer. Took it back to the picture the of The coffee Smith. creamer was eye level. I could not possibly have seen the floor. Ms. Smith, tell me about your injuries. Well, so like I said, the, the arm is fractured and I have this this cervical fracture in, in my neck, and I had a fusion. And because of that fusion, I cannot turn my head fully left or fully right. And my, my mobility is so limited. And I have these adorable twin girls. You can only imagine how I have to pick them up, turn, twist, bend, and it's nearly impossible. I can't do anything without help. I can frankly barely go to the bathroom without help. I see that you have submitted to this court $110,000 just in your past medicals. Yes, sir. It's clear from the medical records that you submitted that you went through a pretty invasive surgery too. Extremely, Your Honor. And you're asking this court for $50,000 for your future medicals, right? Yes, Your Honor, I understand. I'm gonna need a great bit of therapy and, and other things ahead. I want to understand the nature of your injuries and what the future looks like from a medical perspective. So this court has consulted Dr. Hadari Brooks. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Brooks to come in and help us out? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you so much. You're the best, man. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Dr. Brooks, how are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Can you explain the plaintiff's injuries? Sure. There are seven cervical vertebrae in your neck. She basically broke the bottom one, if you will, of the seven. And she sustained what is called a burst fracture, meaning that the fracture is in multiple pieces, as opposed to, say, a compression fracture, which tends to be in just one or two pieces. How do you treat that, Doc? So the importance of that burst fracture is those fragments can go backwards and sometimes injure the spinal cord which can make a person 
paralyzed. So what you have to do with surgery, and we have a video here that's going to help illustrate this point, is you have to first, this white substance is the disc that sits between the bones. We have to remove that and then place a new disc, which is either artificial or bone, to maintain the space between the two bones, if you will. And then we want to fuse the bones so that they can't move and protect our break. In that case, we have to add a plate and screws, as is illustrated here. So it's quite an invasive surgery that's required when you have to do this cervical fusion case. So that hardware is inside her body. Absolutely. And that How long will it be there? Ideally, her entire life. What are the future limitations, if any? So you would have limited range of motion because you have a segment that's fused that's not meant to be fused. Then you have a much higher risk of arthritis in the associated segments above and below your fusion. And that is something that may require in-depth surgery in the future, say 10, 12 years from now. So this road of healing isn't over yet? Absolutely not, no. Doctor, thank you so much. You are released. We appreciate you. Thank you. Ms. Smith, you are asking this court to award you a half a million dollars for your pain and suffering. Tell me about that. Why I should give you that amount of money? To tell you the truth, what's happened to me is so life-changing that there really isn't even an amount of money that would cover it. What I'm asking for is the bare minimum of what I'm gonna need in terms of you fixing- You spilled the sour Excuse cream. Excuse me, but I'm trying to answer the judge about what my life is gonna look like in the future. You spilled it and you didn't Ex report it. We were all there Your five Honor, to seven I'm sorry, is but our I would business like you time. to understand- Folks, we need order that. in this court. Your Honor. Listen, I certainly understand you've been horribly injured. Okay, that's beyond dispute but you seem to quickly throw the blame to them, throw the blame to them, throw the blame to them, and not one ounce to you for not reporting this. I certainly would have reported it if would there have. was. Do you if, wish you would have? I can't even say that I wish I would have because there was literally nobody to report it to. If I could have, I looked. Mr. Williams, I'm going to start a sentence and I want you to finish it for me. This is not my fault because I didn't spill the sour cream. I didn't report, I, it wasn't, I didn't report the sour cream. I didn't even know about the sour cream until after the plaintiff fell, Your Honor. How, how am I supposed to, to fix something I don't know about? This was a blatant spill. It was right in the middle of the floor. If it was Had so she been blatant, watching where she was going, she would have seen it. If it was so it was blatant, huge, you why saw didn't the somebody picture, else see Your Honor, it and report it? It's not it. plausible to me. that the plaintiff did not see the sour cream, sir. I see that. I did not see it. I reached for the Well, you creamer. have acted as a responsible business owner in putting systems and protocol for cleaning the floors. That's, that's a very good thing to do, and all businesses should do that. Yeah. Folks, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Ms. Smith, you've got to prove that Mr. Williams did something wrong that caused your injury. Here, you've put up evidence that although you spilled this sour cream, that you left, and when you came back, you expected that it would be cleaned up, and you slipped in the sour cream that you spilled. You believe it's his responsibility to make sure that his employees go and see this kind of thing and clean it up. Had he done his job, you never would have been hurt. Mr. Williams, you believe that this is, makes no sense. You spilled the sour cream, you slipped in the sour cream. How could that be my fault? Plus, I'm a responsible businessman. I have actual systems and protocols in place to take care of this kind of thing if you let me know that there is a problem. Well, this case is an intersection of the law and common sense. Common sense says, if you spilled the sour cream and you slip in the sour cream, you should never be allowed in a courtroom. <laughs> this verdict will shock some people, but it is what the law commands. I was looking at the text messages from Miss Smith to her husband. 22 minutes went by. And timing is very important in the law, even when you don't have notice. If your systems,
periodically go through, they not only clean, but they inspect. Uh -huh. 22 minutes of this stuff being on the floor is simply too long to be there. Oh. Your folks should have caught it, and I believe that them not getting it is your proving the wrong that caused your harm. Oh. I find in your favor, oh and I'm going to give you everything you asked for. You ask this court for past medical expenses of $110,000, future medical expenses of $50,000, and pain and suffering of $500,000 for a total award of $660,000. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. This verdict is controversial because Mrs. Smith slipped on sour cream she herself spilled. Here the defendant had procedures in place to clean up spills, but none to quickly discover them. This spill was on the floor for 22 minutes. Judge Gino found this was an unreasonable amount of time not to be discovered and cleaned up. is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Jenkins versus Flores. Ms. Jenkins, it's my understanding you're suing Mr. Flores for injuries you sustained when you slipped and fell at his gas station. You're asking this court to award you $10,000 for past medicals, $45,000 for your future medicals, $150,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $205,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Flores, it's your position that she knew everything you know. And had she looked at your sign, she never would have been injured. Yes, Your Honor. So let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Jenkins, how did you get to this gas station this day? Well, Your Honor, my husband and I, we own a gift basket company. So we make these gift baskets and we deliver them all over the tri-state area. We own two vans and that's what we used to deliver them. And so on this particular day, we were driving, um, we were going on a route. It was a very rural area. Um, we weren't gonna hit another gas station or a rest stop for miles. So we decided to stop at this restroom on that day. So you and your husband started this delivery business together? Yes, it's a gift basket business, Your Honor. And so we actually take them to the customers ourselves. Yes, sir. We started about two years ago, so we really enjoy it. We have a lot of fun with it, and the driving part, too, I really enjoy. Tell me about your gas station, Mr. Flores. Well, Your Honor, I do own this gas station. Um, we're located remotely off the interstate. Um, there's a picture of me right there, nice, handsome fellow. Um, if you say so yourself. Hey, I do say so, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Well, we are fairly convenient for people coming in and out of the city. Uh, we have a steady in clientele coming in day in, day out. Um, the truckers keep us busy, and we've never had any problems with any security issues. I got a trusty tire iron for it in case we do. And uh, <laughs> as far as my relationship with uh, Ms. Jenkins, we only met in passing. It was very brief. Um, she came in asking for a restroom key, which I did give to her, but I left the premises soon after, so I have no knowledge of what went down. So once you got the restroom key, what happened? Since he gives me the bathroom key, it's a piece of, it's a key attached to this big chunk of wood and says the restroom's out back, you know? So I go out back, there's a grimy door with the unisex sign on it. So I'm thinking, oh man. Wow. And you know, I go inside and immediately the sight and the smell of this bathroom almost made me lose my lunch. I mean, just the smell, if I could describe it, it's like, stale urine and rotten trash. Yeah. That's the bathroom? That's, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Yes, that is. And it was absolutely disgusting. Unfortunately... I can almost smell that through the screen. You can. I think you can. You know? So, Ms. Jenkins, how did you get hurt? Okay, so, Your Honor, after I walk into this disgusting death trap, there are more wet paper towels and junk all over the floor near the stall. So I'm going to use the restroom, you know, do what I got to do. And as I'm going to use it, my foot slips on some of the paper towels that were under my feet. And I fall, you know? I hit my head really hard, and when I made contact with the ground, Your That's Honor... That's what it looked yes, like? Yes, 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 that right there. And when I made contact with the ground, I could hear my back crack and my leg snap, you know? And I just, I laid there in agony because I couldn't move. I couldn't reach my phone to call my husband. And I laid there 
screaming for help for what felt like hours on this filthy floor. I mean, it was it was absolutely awful. It was a nightmare. Mr. And Flores, come on, man. That is that what your bathrooms look like? Your Honor, I've never seen that picture before in my Do life. Do you use that bathroom? Your Honor, I've never had a problem with the facility. Well, not whether it works, but whether it's disgusting. Well, Your Honor, look, we had some issues with this restroom earlier in the day. Okay. We had a plumbing issue. What I did was I put a wet floor sign on the door after my plumber came in and rectified the situation. So the toilet had overflowed before Miss Jenkins went into the bathroom? Yes, Your Honor. And that's why you had the sign on the door? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Jenkins, you've got a black eye. What, what yeah. caused your black eye? Would you like me to show you, Your yes, Honor? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. Take your time. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, this is the stall, as you can see here, and my feet would be right about in there, and I slipped. This wall that's right there, that's, that's right there in that spot. So, I, my, this slips from under me, my back hits the back of the toilet, and as I cripple over when I'm falling, my head hits this metal piece right there, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, that's a tight space the there. That's a lot of contorting to have all these extended. And it's injuries. a lot of pain as well. Yeah, it yeah. happened. Yeah. What? What? Do you believe she wasn't hurt in your bathroom? Uh, I'm not saying whether or not she was hurt. I'm just saying whether or not she did not know. She knew the fact that we had a wet floor sign on the door, and she should have been more careful. And I heard something about you taking pictures. You huh? Well, well wait a minute, wait a minute. Couldn't you have just locked it and said, ma'am, I'm sorry, our bathroom is not in any shape Thank you. for anyone Thank you. to use? Yes. Exactly. Your Honor, the restroom was usable. The restroom was had not it usable. Had it not been usable, if you could not flush the toilet, we've got people coming in and out every day. I heard not one complaint from telling... any of the patrons that came into the store okay. until Do Ms... you really think that your wet floor sign did enough Address warning me, for that? Address it's enough, me, it's enough for you to know no. to be cautious when you go in no. the door. No, well, wait a honor. minute. Let's, let's add some balance to this now. You saw the wet floor sign. It yes. wasn't a secret to you, right? No, exactly. Your Honor, it was not. I saw the wet floor sign, but honestly, I don't think it was enough of a warning here. I mean, a wet... This is more than a wet floor. I unfortunately put my feet in it, and my feet stuck to the ground as my feet were in it. But I mean, we have to go. This is just nasty. It's just nasty. It's awful. That you it's... can't be proud of that bathroom, right, Mr. Flores? Your Honor, to my defense, the floor was wet. We told her as plain as day. And as the far... The floor was filthy. I well, mean, that, that's disgusting. beyond wet. Well, Your Honor, I was away from the premises at the time of this accident. I mean, how do we know that de she didn't mess up the bathroom oh, herself? Come but let on. me, let me. Are you kidding me? Mr. Flores. Where could I have gotten that much dirt and mess to make it even look like that? Are you serious right now? I know this is important to you. You've been injured, but you gotta address me. Mr. Flores, why didn't you just have somebody go in there and clean that bathroom up? I was not there, Your Honor. Well, let me give you a legal lesson. As a business owner, just because you leave the premises doesn't mean you're relieved of a responsibility exactly. to have your place be safe. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But Your Honor, as far as the restroom situation goes, Miss Jenkins could have alerted the clerk that was on duty of this horrendous bathroom condition. Well, hold on for a minute. Uh, you mean y'all didn't know this bathroom was nasty? Thank you. I had no earthly idea. Well, Miss Jenkins, you did myself. know it was nasty. I did know that right? it was very nasty, Your Honor. Just like I said to Mr. Flores, he mm -hmm. could have closed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there are some circumstances that are more urgent than common sense would allow, mm -hmm. but couldn't you have just gone down the road to another bathroom? No! If we could have gone down the road to another gas station, please believe me, we would have. Unfortunately, on our route, this was going to be the last gas station for miles and miles and miles. So, tell and me about your injuries. Oh, my goodness. Where do I start? Well, to begin, when I got to the hospital, they told me that I had a herniated disc in my back. So, I have a lumbar fusion issue that's going to require another surgery later on down the road. The recovery time alone is going to be three months, you know? The, the medical bills are going to be very expensive. I'm going to probably have to do physical therapy after that. I mean, this whole ordeal has just been, has just been a nightmare. The future medicals of $45,000 yes. are for your surgery? Yes, my surgery and any impending physical therapy that I'll have to have thereafter, Your Honor.
and that is to correct your herniated disc in your back. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Now, what about your head and your neck? You've got a neck brace on, and yes. clearly your head has yes. been disturbed. Well, I hit my head really hard, as you can see here, obviously. And, you know, I have headaches now all the time. Um, most of the time, I'm, I'm in pain. Between my head and the extent of my back pain is so bad that they put me in this because they didn't want me to, to risk, you know, messing anything up before my surgery. And honestly, Your Honor, if I could describe the pain that I've been in on a daily basis. Your Honor, the extent, it, the, the, the extent of all these injuries are not my fault. Well, you, is, you see that there are severe injuries, right? Yes, I do. But I would like to see, uh, do we have x-rays to verify that all of these injuries are actually accurate? So you, do, do, well, let's, so, let's talk about that. I mean, do you it, doubt that she was injured on your place? She was very difficult to have the extent of the injuries that you did with the length of the fall that you had in this restroom. I don't buy one bit. I'm really not sure I like the way you're approaching this. You know, I, you know we did our what, part. What reason do I have as the judge to doubt whether she's telling the truth? Is she coming in here faking this whole thing? Where are the x-rays? Just as to the injuries. What are the x-rays? Where's the physician that can verify that oh, she's no, actually no, injured? Goodness. Well, here's what I've got to do as a judge. I've got to look at the evidence. Ms. Jenkins has submitted $10,000 in past medical bills and projected surgeries that are going to cost $45,000 from her doctors. Now, unless you have some evidence to challenge that, it stands as true. Thank Not you. whether you're responsible, I'll figure that out, but whether she's injured, unless you can tell me something other than your opinion, I gotta conclude that she's been hurt very badly. Thank well, you, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Jenkins, yes, Your Honor. you brought your husband with you. Yes, yes, I Mr. did. Mr. Ralph Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins, would you stand and go to the podium, please? Yes, sir. What has this done to your family? Well, Yana, first of all, it's really affected our love life. I mean, like, she has problems in bed. And, you know, like she says, she has uh, headaches all the time. So it's really put a strain on our relationship. This is a, a big number you're asking for, Ms. Jenkins. Yes. $150,000 in pain and suffering. Yes. Tell me why I ought to give that to you. My life isn't even my life anymore. Like, my husband, you know, touched on briefly, Everything has changed for us. I can't d work right now. I can't drive, you know, my truck, so our business is in jeopardy. The bills keep coming in and coming in. We have no idea what's going to happen financially, in the future. I've been feeling very depressed. I don't feel like myself. And I'm on this pain medication, and it makes me feel disoriented. It's just so hard because we have no idea what's going to happen to us after this. I have no idea if my life is ever going to look the same again, what's going to happen to my business. Mr. Flores, you see these injuries have changed this family. Your Honor, please do not let this emotional charade take you away from the truth. What? The truth of you the know, matter is... You know, I thought is... that you had had the point when I said it in the past. This, this whole approach drives me crazy because you have no reason to doubt whether this lady was hurt, whether this family was affected. I'm, I'm gonna really push you to the wall. How often were you having people inspect and clean those bathrooms? Your Honor, we run a tight ship. No, it's not that Now, tight. you know how you wanted me to doubt her injuries? Mm -mm. I'm doubting now your tight ship when, when the ship looks like that, and I did say ship. Exactly. Your Honor. Exactly. Your Honor, we had no complaints until no. Ms. Jenkins came by. It doesn't matter. So that matter. makes it right, though? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't how is it, it that matter. the only people that are complaining are you? No. What, what I, you know, a six-figure price just, tag attached to your complaint. Just well, because... Talk, no, no, just because... Order in this court. Now, when I bang this gavel again, I'm gonna get active. Address your comments to me, or I'm gonna throw all of y'all out of this courtroom. And, Your Honor, if I may, he knew the bathroom was not being upkept, and I know because I have pictures, okay? I have pictures of the restroom. I'm glad you did take pictures. And I have pictures pictures. of the service record. You I submitted took... those to the court? Yes, yes, Your Honor. All I right, let's take a peek at it. service record. And if you look, look there, Your Honor. The last date of time that someone signed off on cleaning that restroom was at 9 a.m. that morning. I fell around 3.15 p.m. that afternoon. Now, That's Mr. a Flora, long time. If your folks were inspecting and cleaning the bathroom, there should be signatures or at least initials all the way down, right? There should be, Your Honor. Now, when I look at that, should I assume that it wasn't cleaned after 9 a.m.? I'm guessing that that didn't happen, but I have no way to tell. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. You've got to prove that the defendant did something wrong, 
That's the first thing. And then the defendant's wrong caused your injuries. You've put up evidence that you thought it was simply a wet floor, and you get in there, about to sit down, slip on this paper towel, whatever trash was on that floor, and your whole life changed. I don't care how you got it, but you were injured in that stall. That is clear in my mind. Mr. Flores, y'all had nasty bathrooms, okay? <laughs> but nasty does not mean negligence. Here, the legal principle is superior knowledge of a hazard. The hazard is debris on the floor that caused you to fall. Under the law, if Mr. Flores knows more about that hazard than you do, you win. If you know, both know about the hazard equally, you lose. Now, Ms. Jenkins, when you went into the bathroom, you knew the floor was gonna be wet because you saw the wet floor sign. When you opened the door and saw all the trash on the floor, you knew what the hazard was. You went into the stall, did your best, but the law says, you knew as much about the hazard in that bathroom as Mr. Flores did. Oh, yeah. And I hate this ruling, but I am wedded to the law. I've got to find against you because you had equal knowledge of the hazard. Yes. So I find for the defendant, that's my final ruling, and this matter's adjourned. Yes! <laughs> yes, sir! Oh, Mr. Flores, you do not celebrate in my courtroom. You should be ashamed of the way these bathrooms were. The law is the only reason I found in your favor. If it was about how well you kept these bathrooms, or frankly, even your attitude, I'd give them everything they wanted and put you in jail. You gotta do better from this moment on and take your celebration elsewhere. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Leonard Lundy has to say. The defendant alleged that Mrs. Jenkins was faking or exaggerating her injuries, yet had no evidence to support his defense. The plaintiff presented medical evidence about her injuries and treatment, so Judge Gino rejected the defense. Although her injuries were severe, she lost because she knew the floor was slick and hazardous and was hurt as a result of her ignoring the risk of injury.